Hello, Donna here. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for tuning in. Um, if you're familiar with my work, uh, you probably know I like big beads. I like big pieces. I always have. Um, here's an example of one of my big pieces. These, some of my mud cloth series of canes. And just graduated tapering pod forms and they're all backed with red and orange stripes, which is my pretty much my favorite. Here is another. These are transfers on the same pod shape. There are only six, actually six beads on this piece. And then finally, here's another one. It's sort of, of all of them, it's the one that I wear because it is not terribly large. Although when you wear it, it looks like a big piece, but because it only has these nine elements in the middle, it looks large, but it isn't particularly heavy. You see, the problem with a piece like this is really the weight. It's just the weight. The thing is really, really heavy, and it can be difficult to wear something like this for a very long time. It's, it's un, it becomes uncomfortable. Now, these are hollow. They're hollow uh, pods, but nonetheless, uh, because of the size and because of the number of them, they, they are quite heavy. The, the piece in total is quite heavy. Okay, so what I'm going to show you today is just quickly how you would make the graduated draping forms that were used underneath all of these pods. So let's begin. Now I back them all because I like the way it looks, but if you wanted to reduce the weight further, of course, you do not have to back these pods. All of mine are backed and that increases the weight. All right, so I'm going to start with um, just a rod of scrap clay, and this is probably about an inch in diameter. Now I'm gonna take my marks and I'm, I'm going to use the 15 millimeter side. I'm going to transfer the marks onto the cylinder. And then I'm going to cut a two, a three, and a one, two, three, four mark section. All right, so you can see that I am uh, creating a graduated system based on the diameter of the rod and the 15 millimeter side of my mark set. Let's start with the smallest one. I take my fingers and I indent the ends because it makes it a little bit easier to create the point at the end. Repeat on the other side. Like so. Okay, so that's the beginning of the process. Now to draw the points out, I will take and drop it in this part of my palm, like so, and just roll back and forth. And you can see I'm starting to pull out the point. I'm gonna lift my phone just a bit. Okay, now let's do it the other end. To eliminate this kind of bulge in the middle, I will roll against my work surface like so. And then of course I use my hands, my fingers, 
to press in and to draw the form out and make it just a bit longer. And refine the points. Okay. Like so. And that looks pretty good. All right, and now I'm going to take and I'm going to place the form on my work surface and try to make it straight from point to point. Then take a thick blade, a clay blade, and using kind of a gillet, uh, like a paper cutter, you know, the, the kind with the arm like this. I'm going to try to cut from this point to that point using this motion. It's a little hard because I'm trying to do it. By looking at the piece sideways. <laughs> okay, I think I did it. Now I've got my two halves. So when you cut it, of course, it squishes down a little bit. So you're just going to have to take and straighten it out and then press it to a ceramic tile. Repeat with the other. And of course, you're going to repeat the process with the other cut pieces. Examine the pieces from the side and make sure that the curve across the top is nice and even. Make sure you have no space between the clay and the tile. Okay. Now this I'm going to cure in the oven uh, for half an hour. I set my oven at 300 degrees and the oven is cold when I begin. Okay, so I will do that and um, and I will also do these. So when I get back, we'll have six, six um, half pods or draping forms. Now, once you make these, you can't use them forever because uh, as you will see, we drape raw clay over the top of the cured forms, so they are repeatedly cured, repeatedly cured. And uh, eventually the clay does start to s sort of degrade, so you have to repeat the process and make new, I would say, every four or five necklaces. All right, so I'll be back. Hello, back again. Now, our, uh, our draping forms are curing, but I wanted to show you something else. And this is a good example of a necklace that I've made that is a lot of hollow forms. Um, you can see that they're, they're simple shapes, but they are not the same shape. Round, this is an oval. Here we've got triangular. This is just a very large thing I made. Round, round, triangle, oval, and then triangle again. So I did not make draping forms uh, in order to make these hollow beads. Uh, instead, I used cutters. So, here are just three cutters. 
that I actually used to make this necklace. And um, what you're doing is actually making the uh, bead itself. You're not making a draping form in this case because you don't really need to. All right, so I'm gonna take and I'm turning the cutter to the cutting edge. And this is scrap clay that I've rolled through a medium setting, I would say. And I'm just taking my fingers and I'm hollowing out and curving the clay itself so it's not completely flat. I'm gonna put it kind of in the cutter and that edge is gripping and grabbing the clay. And then I can just, you know, I'm gonna trim some of the excess away because it really is in my way. More than anything else, the problem it was giving me was just the weight of the excess clay hanging over. Okay, that's better. Now at this point, I can actually just stroke that clay that's inside of the cutter lightly. You know what, I, I guess I am kind of making a draping form. It's just that the draping form itself becomes part of that hollow bead. It isn't something that I will take out and use again and again. Okay. Now if you look inside, you can see that I've rounded the sheet. Now I'm going to take and put it on a tile, cut through, remove the excess, and kind of gently squeeze and shake it out like so. and this will be my hollow form. Now, the, when you cut, you create um, a corner. See this, how it comes down? Let me see if I can turn this. It comes, the top arcs, curves toward the tile, but then it, I've got this little corner here, and I have to deal with that. And so I'm either going to smooth it out with let's say some kind of sculpture tool or else I'm gonna take my blade and I'm going to hold it at the same angle and cut that corner off like so. Because although I certainly could sand it after it's cured, I find that this is just a little bit easier. So let's see. So you can see I've cut off quite a bit of that corner. So just take your time, go all the way around and cut it off. And the amount of time you spend cutting it off now is about half the time you would spend sanding it later. Okay, so once uh, that corner is cut off, then of course this piece is cured. After it's cured, uh, then you deal with it the same way you deal with um, the draping form, except as I said, it stays inside the bead. Okay, I'll be back. All right, so you know to sand your forms, which will help prevent the clay from sticking. So now we're going to take Repel Gel and put it on each
each of the sanded forms. Repel gel will work wet or dry. And I apply repel gel before every curing. So in other words, if I were to use any of these forms again, I will of course apply the repel gel. Now let's cover one of these little guys. Um, I prepared this, it's a slice off of one of my mud cloth canes and um, I backed it, I placed it on black clay and then um, I enlarged it through the pasta machine and I textured it with a texture sheet. Now, one thing about this, you want to, you want to have a back, a backing on let's say a cane slice uh, because, first of all, I don't know if this is going to be hollow with the backing or without. So I would not use scrap clay. I'm going to use the black because it might be seen in the finished piece. Actually, this piece will fit better on the next size. I believe. Yep. And because I know I'm going to trim the ends, I'm just pinching them like that. Helps a little bit in terms of pressing the raw clay down so that the, end, the clay on the ends doesn't uh, kind of flip up. Okay. not exactly centered. So I'm going to see if I can lift it a bit and scoot it over. There we go. I think that's better. Okay. Flip it over, take your blade, and trim away the excess. Okay, and we're ready to cure that. So I'm going to cure it and we will finish this one piece when I get back. Back again. Well, my, um, my pieces are cured and when they come out of the oven, and they're of course cool, uh, they look like this. Of course, they, it's a darker gray and there's a slight sheen to the surface. Well, what I've done is I've sanded all the rest. I've 
taken very coarse grit paper and I'm just going to rough up the surface of the form. Now the reason I'm doing this is because a rougher surface like this sort of repels the raw clay. A perfectly smooth surface is actually what clay likes most and what it wants most to stick to. Now this is also an opportunity to refine the shape and to correct small imperfections. You can refine the tips of the forms with your sandpaper. Actually, this is Abranet and um, it's really great stuff. I think it's probably used for drywall but it's really wonderful stuff. So I think this is about a 120 grit. You can see it takes the clay down very, very, very quickly. Okay, so let me get rid of some of this dust. And we shall proceed. Hello, back again. Now this has been cured, it's warm. And what I do is I take a bowl of water, sorry, this is a pretty grody bowl, and then I take a tool and I run it around. To, just to loosen it up. And then I remove the form like that. Okay. Like so. And then it probably helps to push it to something cold and hold it for just a few minutes minutes, a few seconds, just flatten the bottom. Do the same thing here, flatten the bottom. And if this gets misshapen in any way, um, just put it back in the oven and it'll flatten down. Back again. Um, we are ready to start backing our cured pod pieces. Okay, now here's one that I already backed. So I can show you. It's still tough, uh, stuck to the tile and it's still also warm. But you might be able to see what's happening here. There is the stringing hole. You can't see it because it's black on black, but there it is. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be making this nice enclosed back with a channel through which you will string your cord. First, you have to prepare the pieces. The preparation is pretty simple. You're just gonna need your sanding sheet and you're just going to sand the bottom flat. It's just as simple as that. It doesn't really take very much to do. Get rid of the dust. And now take the form and put it flat on your work surface and see if there's any rocking. This is actually very nice and flat. I think that this would work just fine. But sometimes you run into a situation where the piece actually, when you push one side, it will lift on the other pretty radically. And you can actually rock back and forth. Now I'm forcing it to do this right now by pushing extra hard on the top, but this is actually flat. 
Now let's say that you have a problem with the rocking back and forth, and you know that this piece is not sitting flat on your work surface. The solution is really simple. Take a ceramic tile and heat it in your oven. And when I say heat, uh, five minutes. Five minutes in a 300 degree oven is enough. Take it out, of course with your oven mitts, and pretend this is hot. It's not, but pretend it's hot. Then you will take your piece, put it on the hot tile, and hold the tips down. And you'll find that the clay warms up very quickly and it will adapt and take on this new shape that you're giving it by holding it flat against the tile. Now when it's good and warm, you take it and you put it in a bowl of water into which you have placed a tile. Take the warm piece, put it in the tile and hold the tips down until the piece itself is cool. So you're, you're basically letting the, um, the piece cool in the shape you want. Okay. So it's really just that simple. If you find that your piece is not laying perfectly flat, All right, now for purposes of demonstration, I am not going to use these and I am not going to use black. I'm going to use different colors because you'll be able to see them better. I would say 99% of the time I use black. but when you're teaching, black is not the best. All right, so here's the top I'm gonna to be using. It's just a Skinner blend that I draped over one of my forms and then removed. I also did the heat, the tile thing and then putting it in the cold water. Okay, so here's what's going on. You can see that the black is the bottom most layer and it's the thinnest. The middle layer is the layer that accommodates the cord. So if you're using two millimeter cord, three millimeter cord, just make sure that that cord is the same or a little bit thinner than the thickness of the clay so that you can slide the cord through into the channel. And then the third component is, of course, the top. Now, this is the piece that I showed you in, I think it was maybe part two, maybe part two or three, pushing it into a, a cutter to make a rounded form, to make a hollow cap. All right, so let's continue. Now, we have to determine where we're gonna put the hole first. And you know, all the pieces you have will have a center point that's your kind of your center of gravity. And if you put the hole there, the chances are the piece will tip because it's not weighted in one direction or another. If it's evenly weighted, then it doesn't want to lie in any particular fashion. It will pivot on the cord point. So of course you're gonna want to go probably what I would say north of the center point, and that's where the cord will go, strung through. Now for my pieces, the ones I made, um, I would say that would be an inch from the top, but let's measure and find out exactly where the center point is. This piece is three inches long, which means the exact center would be an inch and a half. So I'm gonna go an inch. Now, I could go above an inch, I could probably go a little below an inch, but I think an inch will work for my purposes at this, uh, at this time. If you go too close to the top, 
sometimes you get into a situation where if the beads are too close together, they start crowding each other out. So you will have to space the beads apart if the hole is too close to the top. All right, so let's measure and mark one inch. I can never find a Sharpie. Ah, there's my Sharpie. I know I pulled it out. So I will just go to the back. I'm gonna measure here. And that's where my cord will go through, right there. All right, so here is the bottom most sheet and I rolled it through setting number five on my atlas. My atlas begins at zero. So it's thin, but it's certainly not the thinnest. Now it's also textured, you can probably see that. So I roll the clay through setting five and then I re-roll it <clears throat> through setting five again with a texture sponge. Then lightly press it to a ceramic tile. Now here is that middle layer, that violet color. And this has been rolled through setting number two because setting number two for me on my atlas will accommodate a two millimeter cord. Now I've just cut the sheet so that I know that I have one inch above the cut and I have enough room below for the bottom of the bead. Press it. Press the middle sheet to the bottom sheet. Then position the second sheet, leaving a gap that will accommodate the cord. Secure it. Now I'm going to take repel, uh, repel gel. Not repel gel, do not use repel gel for this. Use poly paste. And I'm just going to apply poly paste along the sanded edge. So there's my mark. That mark will go right over the channel. Make sure that the bead is running straight this way, that it's not skewed to one side or the other. And firmly press the top to that middle layer, like so. And see, this is why you've got to make sure it's flat. Because if it's not flat, you're gonna get big gaps somewhere along the perimeter of your bead. You'll have some kind of gapping. And that's why it was so important, or it is so important, to make sure that the bottom of your bead is flat. All right. So just take your blade and try to cut straight down. Hold that blade at a 90 degree angle to the tile and cut straight down.
Oops. Okay, and there you go. And you can see the channel through the channel. Now this will be cured exactly as it is, stuck to the tile, and you will, same thing I always do, um, 30 minutes from a cold oven uh, at 300 degrees. The hardest thing to get right for me uh, in many ways is the curing. All our ovens are a little bit different, so the more you work, the more familiar you will be with your own oven, with what, whatever it is, how fast it comes to temperature, whether it spikes badly, whether you have to avoid certain things, if you have to put a tile in the oven to sort of equalize the temperature. You'll figure those things out. It just takes a little time. All right, so um, I will be back. Now, while that piece is curing, I want to talk about something else. And, you know, when you look at the sides of these pieces, you can see that, you can see that it's quite thick. It's quite thick. And it really has to be that thick if you're going to try to accommodate cord like this. You need something to create the channel in and so it, it's got to be thick. Now, whether you have to see it is another issue. Here, the way I've constructed this, yes, you're going to see it. Okay, Louie, enough, honey. That was Louie scratching. Um, you have to see it if you do it the way that I have taught you in this class. But that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be that way. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's take this piece. Now I constructed the whole uh, bead with the channel with a scrap clay top. You're seeing the center and you see the bottom and I did that of course because I'm teaching you um, teaching you what the what the actual components are that you need to construct in order to make the channel into which you feed the cord. But if you construct this whole piece first, you can then take something else. And I just cut a slice off of the cane from one of the tutorials I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you. And I flattened it out with, a, with an acrylic rod. So I had more control over the way the pattern moved and the thickness because it wasn't uniformly thin. But I can take this, put it on, and trim, and you won't see that. I can cover it up. But it just means that if you don't want to see the base, you don't want to see where the channel is and where the cord exactly is going, then you can avoid that. It just means you have to build this first and then cover. So I think that that's clear. So let me cover, let me show you, I'll just quickly cover this. I'm going to put quite a bit of poly paste on because the surface of this piece is quite rough because of the sanding. If it were perfectly smooth, I could use less. As a matter of fact, I could just use liquid. But when you rough up a surface to the extent that I roughed this up, what happens is it almost seems like the poly paste or the liquid starts getting absorbed by the clay. And then uh, the poly paste and the liquid are not as effective. So 
So what I'm doing here is just easing that all that excess clay up around the edge. It's got to go somewhere, but I can control where it goes. Now, we don't want to lose the hole. So I'm going to take a needle and feed it through and poke the other side of the hole. That is really important. I have lost the hole before and it is a pain and it's sometimes very hard to find it. Okay, then you just take your blade and slide it around, cutting the excess away. Now, I'm not personally crazy about seeing this edge around the whole piece, but that is kind of the price you're going to pay for not seeing that heavy base. There is a solution to that too. You can put a very, very thin sheet of black across the whole bottom if you don't like this edge. Okay, so there it is. And I will put this in the oven. back again. Now my spear, back spear, is cured. And um, I'm going to sand the edge because if you look, of course there's a very distinct corner. Well, that doesn't feel good. And so I'm sanding, not so much because you see it, because you don't, but just because you feel it. sanding block and just direct your energies and that sandpaper to the side. I'm trying to avoid sanding the actual cane top. Okay, don't forget the tips because you don't want to poke yourself or you don't want to poke anybody else either. And just take your time and sand. Now to restore the black, I'm going to use Nivea again. Now Nivea is not a permanent, it's not a permanent solution, but I happen to like it because it's a totally non-toxic solution. And um, it's available everywhere. And I think it's a really good solution to the sanding scuff mark problem. Really softens them, restores the color, and when it's completely absorbed in, you get a really nice matte finish. Okay, so that's that. Now, when you string it, 
take your cord and cut the end like so, and that will make it much easier to feed the cord through like that. If you have to enlarge the hole, that's easy too. You just take a drill that is the same diameter as the cord and you use that to drill out the hole. Now, this piece that I made, definitely I've got to drill the hole, right? Now, this piece is still warm, so I shouldn't be doing it now. But it's just as simple as slowly drilling into the clay. like that. Then feeding it through. Now, this is really, if I were to say this is not my favorite, that would be an understatement. I, I don't like this at all. It was just an example, something I grabbed just to show you for our little tutorial. But the good news is I can cover this up with something I like, and that is precisely what I'm going to do because I don't like this one little bit. Okay, so here is our class example with the three layers, exposing the three layers. And I'll just leave this as, as an example piece. So that's it for making draping forms and then putting a uh, cane, cane slice on top and how to use it and how to finish them. So I hope you've enjoyed our time together and I hope you tune in again for more tutorials. So until then, bye.